how's it going? Oh, you know, I mean, I'm learning about these uh, these dinosaur shrimp you wrote about. Can you uh, can you tell me about them? All right. So it's no surprise that northern Arizona is a very dry place. It's a desert, uh, but sometimes they get a lot of rain, and that is exactly what happened the last week and a half of July of this year. The region got almost five inches of rain, which is nearly 13 centimeters. Oh and when God. it rains so much in the desert, these temporary ponds known as vernal pools form. Mm -hmm. And at Upaki National Monument, some visitors notice, notice these like tadpole-like creatures swimming in one of the pools. So they quickly alerted the rangers and they said, hey, I saw the tadpoles in, in the pond at the ball court. Um, there it is. Look at that. It looks like a little alien. Turns out yeah. it's a crustacean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, here's the ball court. What is yeah. that? What's the ball court for? Do you know? Right. So the indigenous people of the region built this uh, ceremonial ball court. And we're actually not sure what it was, um, what its purpose was. I did ask the ranger if it, you know, was used for something similar like the the Maya ball game. But she says they're, they're just not sure. It's actually not in the same shape as the Maya ball game court. So perhaps it's entirely different, but- um, <laughs> Great breeding ground uh, to just hold a lot of these little creatures, yeah? Right, it's perfect for the vernal pool that formed. Um, so to learn what this visitor was talking about, um, one of the rangers, I spoke with her, her name is Lauren Carter, a lead interpretation ranger at Wupaki National Monument. She went down and scooped one up. You're looking at her hand right there. She says these creatures are known as triops and they look like little mini horseshoe crabs with three eyes. And yeah, look at those eyes there. So it has two compound eyes, which mm -hmm. are common among arthropods, which is this massive group that includes insects, arachnids, scorpions, crustaceans. Um, I mentioned this particular creature is a crustacean. Mm -hmm. And then it has a third eye. Look at that little dot between its two main eyes. That oh, is it's a zen. I know it looks very wise. <laughs> so, yeah. so that third eye actually senses light. Mm -hmm. And the third eye is actually quite common among arthropods. And it turns out, like, for example, bees, they have their two compound eyes, and they have three simple eyes. Um, so this one is very prominent, you can see it right in the middle. Um, but yeah, it's got three eyes. And that's what, how it got its name triops means three eyes in Greek. Cool. What, so how long can they stay dormant? That's that's kind of their survival trick. It's so dry in the desert. They can stay in their eggs for decades. And then once there's a heavy rainfall and these vernal pools form, they pop to life, they hatch. And within hours, they start gobbling up as much food as possible. So um, they can filter feed, they can nibble on uh, you know, seeds and leaves and roots. Um, if it's like a scarce food situation, they can even cannibalize each other. Oh, oh no. So I feel bad for the smaller ones. They're probably more the prey for the larger triops. Is that probably what happened to his poor little missing left arm there? Because I'm looking at these other ones, you know, from stock images and uh, they seem a little bit more even. I, I did notice that. Yeah, I'm not sure how he broke his little appendage. Oh, poor poor right. dude. Yeah. Uh, at least it doesn't appear he was uh, entirely... <laughs> eaten or whatever happened to him. Yeah. Tell, tell me more about these little creatures. They're kind of cool looking. I know. So after they've eaten a lot, um, they molt a few times, you know, they're crustaceans, just like crabs and lobsters. And then they reach adulthood really fast, just over a week, I think eight or nine days, they reach adulthood and they're ready to mate again, start the next generation. Oh my goodness. So yeah. And they're, you can tell by looking at this photo, but they're not that big. They're about 1.5 inches long, which is, you know, about four centimeters. And uh, they have a few nicknames. So, you know, they're called triops. That's their genus name. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes they're called tadpole shrimp. They're also known as dinosaur shrimp because uh, they have this long evolutionary history. Their ancestors date back to the Denovian period which lasted from 419 million to 359 million years ago. And they look pretty much the same as their ancestors did. It's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, but because they're so old, like, can we call them living fossils? Oh my gosh, I'm really glad you asked that because this is, 
I think this is a term that gets thrown around, but it turns out that a lot of scientists really hate it. Um, and Carter, the ranger I spoke with, um, she told me, I don't like the term living fossil because it causes a misunderstanding with the public that they haven't changed at all, but they have changed, they have evolved. It's just that the outward appearance of them is very similar to what they were millions of years ago. So put another way, they they do look the same, but they are not the same. They have evolved. Their internal processes are different, at least some of them. So oh, um, yeah, finding. And and uh, and this is all just because of that insane rain that they had. Yeah, yeah, they were. I guess the pond um, lasted three to four weeks, is what Carter told me. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I said they reach adulthood quite rapidly. And then it's time to mate. So how do they mate? Um, you know, a male and a female might find each other and the female will lay eggs. But their circumstances are so, um, it's so interesting. Like maybe they won't be able to find a partner of the opposite sex. And it mm -hmm. turns out that triops are hermaphrodites as well, um, which means they have both male and female organs. It's like so, themselves. <laughs> yeah, so they, they have that uh, flexibility. And they're also parthenogenic, which means the, the females can produce produce offspring from unfertilized eggs. So they don't need a male to uh, to spawn the next generation. More power to them. That's I get, and that's why they've been around for so long. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool superpower. Um, anyway, you can you can read more about them at LiveScience.com. I wrote a whole article about it, and I'm gonna keep my my ear to the ground to hear if there's any more triops in Virginia because I am fascinated by these creatures. Laura Gaggle on the triad beat. Good talking okay. to you, Judy. Thanks so much, Laura.